So uh, let's wait a maybe one more minute. I do know for sure that uh, Paul Randick is uh, joining, but I don't know his he's hitting joining time. And um, yeah, I think it would be good to have a little more members to um, to have our discussion. So um, thanks for your patience. Um, Michael, do you know if um, John is planning to join the call? Um, do you, have you heard anything um, at all? Um, well, and Bill, but he's usually busy, right? Um, I haven't uh, heard from either one of them, but I can ping John. I know John usually makes the calls, so let me uh, let me reach out to him. Okay, wonderful, thanks. Um, so while we're waiting for more uh, participants, maybe we can just um, um, informally um, sort of see the availabilities of, I mean, who's, who's coming to um, Buenos Aires. Um, and uh, so there's an idea, a uh, suggestion about having a joint NRO um, meeting face-to-face -face, uh, in Buenos Aires. Um, so this will be something that uh, we'll cover as part of Agenda Item uh, 7. Um, Um, hi everyone. Um, I must say that we have uh, very low attendance uh, from the Chris team members, uh, but I think um, we want to get started maybe from a uh, very simple update related item first and um, try to see if there's uh, more people who would be joining the call. And we can, when it comes to the discussions related um, items, we can uh, try to see if you want to go ahead and discuss among us, or we feel more comfortable discussing uh, with the wider uh, groups. So uh, let's start uh, with agenda review, uh, as usual. Um, uh, and uh, today it's very easy to confirm the roll call. So we have for Michael and uh, Paul uh, joining the call, and thanks also to the observers. Uh, so the minutes, um, so uh, agenda review, so actions review, this is you know, the same as usual, and three, again, is the same as usual, so confirm discussion status both regionally and globally. And so what's specific for this call is that uh, we want to go through the CRISP, uh, CRISP, uh, the SLA review by the CRISP team um, as agenda four, and as agenda item five, uh, we'd like to um, confirm on how we are going to handle um, the submission to the ICG on the timelines. Uh, agenda number six is um, uh, observations on the um, the names proposal, the third version, um, which is actually not been publicly announced, but um, it's been circulated on the CWG mailing list. And then lastly, we're going to um, cover 
what we're going to do um, in ICANN uh, Buenos Aires. So that's my suggestions. Um, anything else that you'd like to discuss or anything in particular that you feel is important to highlight? Um, no? So then um, let's go to actions review. The first is the minutes. And um, thanks to Herman for sending the minutes for the past uh, three meetings. I had a quick look, and um, uh, I think it looked good overall. I just have very minor uh, suggestions for changes. So I'll send them to the list um, after the call. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anything substantial that needs to be um, um, revised. And uh, and I'm just wondering about the, the minutes for the um, NROEC CRISP meeting. I don't know if this is something that can be publicly shared, but it would still be useful to um, at least uh, among the participants uh, of the meeting um, if there are any, any minutes from those uh, meetings. Yes, we have we have some notes of that of that meeting. I uh, will circulate that uh, with the participants. Okay, great. Oh, thank you very much. And I think this would be helpful to confirm the actions that need follow up and, and make sure that we, we have the same understanding about what was discussed. So um, thank you for this. Um, so could you put this as the action item for the NRO Secretariat uh, in, the, in the minutes? So uh, let's go, and then um, before I forget, maybe uh, for the future with our team calls, it might be useful to have like a, a rough um, confirmation about the attendance and so that if the attendance is like too low, uh, we can try to either re-coordinate or, or things like this. So maybe this, this is something that we might want to consider in, um, in for future meetings. So that's my suggestion. So uh, again, it would be great if uh, this could be noted as the action on terms for the Secretariat. So action review B they is... That, Thank you, Haman. Great. Um, so, uh, to be follow up from um, NROEC Chris call. Um, so this is, you know, simply based on my memory. Uh, so it might be a bit vague, but um, I recall that we have agreed to have more clarity on the Chris team's role uh, in this space because initially it was anticipated that uh, we just develop the proposal and that will be our role. But an ROEC has requested for the additional role um, on the SLA on discussions, and uh, we'd like to have more clarity on what will be the role. Um, and I don't know if they have any expectations um, for the team to take a role related to the review committee and things like this. Um, so, are there any actions or what's the status of? Um, this within the NROEC. Um, Herman, I wonder if you would be able to um, share the update. Uh, so we know I don't I don't have any uh, information on that uh, at this point. Okay, um, but does NROEC recognize this as their action item? Oh yes, yes, yes. But um, uh, there's there's a discussion on the way, but um, I don't think that. Uh, okay, right, right. Be able to. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. I understand. Okay, good. Um, then I, I I was just wondering. So, um, maybe we can uh, confirm at the next NROEC our Chris team face to face meeting. So this might be something to follow up. And um, another thing related to NREC's action is that they, sorry, oh, oh. Is, is me, sorry, can I just jump in there for a moment? I apologize. Please, Thank thanks. you. On this very point, uh, Kerman, can we make a note and, and, and relay this information to the EC so that we could, uh, I mean, you know, there's probably time enough given the face-to-face -face meeting doesn't happen until, I believe, next Sunday? Uh, is the face-to-face -face CRISP NROEC meeting. Uh, 
maybe we can actually uh, put this down as a note that we it would be great if the Chris team could have this information definitely prior to meeting face to face. Of course, in, in fact, uh, the, the EC will meet on, on Monday, and I will put that item in the agenda. Uh, I mean, by teleconference. Uh, yeah. So I will ensure that, that uh, Axel is aware of this and and uh, be part of the agenda of the teleconference on Monday. So um, hopefully we can have more certainty by the face-to-face -face meeting in Buenos Aires. Super. Is that okay, Izumi? Excellent. Wonderful suggestion, Paul. I think that would be so helpful that we have something a little bit concrete for our discussions. I think that would be super. So thank you so much. Thank you. And another action related to the um, NREC is that um, I think they have made an announcement that they will share the table of the feedback from the community and how they have been um, they they plan to handle them. Um, I, I do believe that this is underway, um, but do they plan to publish this before the close of the public comments? Or um, I'm not really seeing the status. So um, yeah, Herman, if you would be able to share. Do you refer to the table for comments of the SLA? Yes. Is to me? Uh, yes, I was referring to the table of contents of the SLA. Yes. Okay. The, there is a preliminary table for the uh, comments um, has been uh, published, and um, it has been uh, circulated as in the IANA transfer mailing list. Um, subject to update that um, with the final comments by the time of the deadline. But there is one document already. Oh, this has been circulated on the on the global analyst. Okay, oh, oh, I must have missed that. Okay, oh, great, great. Okay, thank Let you. Put and I have to in the chat room here so that everybody can come. Okay, you. wonderful. I, I must have overlooked. So thank you for this. Um, and I will be. Um, helpful to have the link. Okay, um, so I think these are the two points that I, I particularly wanted to confirm the status. And um, is there anything else that uh, people would like to follow up um, after the NROEC uh, call? If not, then um, let's confirm, or oh, let's go to agenda item three. Thank you, Herman, for the link. Um, well, but um, confirm discussion status. Um, it's a little bit tough to confirm the discussion status of the each RIR region, um, given that uh, we don't have rep representatives from. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Andres, for joining. Um, welcome. Um, I was hoping that um, there will be somebody from the Afrinic region joining because they had um, the Afrinic meeting. Um, I believe um, in between the last um, Chris, uh, Christine call, but um, maybe we can um, ask on the online about if there's anything notable um, from this session. And um, so, but is there anything that you, you would like to share um, about your regional discussions? If you do, uh, please do feel to uh, feel free to raise your hand. And um, if not, then um, let's go to um, confirm the, the global discussions and... Oh, you zooming? Paul, oh, yes. Sorry, if I can jump in on the points of the SLA discussions from the various regions. I can see that uh, currently we have most of the discussions up online. The only two discussions that I don't see listed there are the ones from the recent RER meetings that were held. Uh, so the one that was held in um, the LACNIC area and the one that was held in uh, Afrinix, a uh, very recent meeting in, in, in Tunisia. And I'm just wondering if, well, we don't have anybody from uh, Afrinix on the line, but maybe Andres, you can shed some light to see. I am, I am online, hello. Oh, sorry. Oh, Mwendoa, I didn't even see you yes. there, sorry. I, I had a problem with my network, but I've been doing Oh, okay. Um, I think it's very um, pertinent that we have all of the discussions from the SLAs from the various regions 
posted as soon as possible. Now I can see the ones from APNIC, RIPE NCC, and ARIN are already published, and that's great. But I think as, as fast as we can, just to make sure that, 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 that the, you know, the communities are well informed and that we are all well informed of what's uh, going on there, because the regional discussions are very important. Um, I would ask my colleagues from, from AFRINIC and from LACNIC if uh, they can try to expedite the publication of their, of their discussions on, on the SLA regionally on, uh, on the NRO list. Okay, we will start yeah. the photo break. Great, wonderful. Um, and would you be able to give us a, a very like rough overview of anything notable that was discussed um, in the AFRINIC meeting? Yes, uh, we held a meeting. It was a it was a panel of four people composed of me. Janvia and our legal expert, the lawyer or the Africanic lawyer, Vishal, and also Alan Beret was in the panel. Uh, there was issues of review committee members wanted to know how many how many people will form the review committee, if the review committee will be a standing committee or a or a hard ad hoc committee and we were able to clarify to them that it is we are not we have yet to decide the number of people to constitute the review committee and that the review committee will be a standing committee. There was issues that were being asked about arbitration and jurisdiction of disputes and we let those issues be answered by the legal expert the AFRINIC lawyer, he, he dealt with all the issues to deal with jurisdiction and arbitration. And also the AFRINIC community really wanted to know if the, uh, the region had participated fully in drafting the SLA. If the region, the AFRINIC region really participated in drafting the SLA. And we also got uh, feedback from the CEO, Alan Barat, who said that uh, the SLA that was being developed by all the regional entire registries also covered the input from the AFRINIC region. There was also the issue of who to exchange the contract with, if it is ICANN or the IANA function operator, <laughs> and we assured them that it will not really matter if, if we extend the SLA with ICANN or any other function operator that is identified at the end of the day. There was also another interesting component. The committee was, was asking why we are developing separate proposals, uh, the naming community, the protocol guys, and also the numbering community. Why could we not sit down the whole three operational communities and come up with one single proposal. Then we informed them that this is the process of the ITG, where each committee was, was mandated to come up with a proposal, and then we will try to come up with a convergence. The three communities will now uh, see where their proposals can be able to meet. And actually, those, those are the issues that we discussed at the AFRINIC meeting in Tunisia. Thank you so much. Looks like you had very lively discussions, and it was really interesting to hear your report. And um, as Paul uh, has uh, mentioned, uh, I think it would be especially useful to um, to share this with the um, on, you know publicly with the community, but also with the NROEC. Possibly, um, maybe, I don't know, before the close of the comment period, if at all possible, so that they can actually, um, you know, take the input on the SLA and maybe uh, also the review committee as a reference when they consider um, you know, the, the details. Um, so thank you so much. Um. We will share, we will share with the, with the community. 
Okay. Oh, thank you. So I I I, I trust uh, you will coordinate with whoever um, within the Afrinic to ensure that this will be posted on the NRO website. Um, okay. So may I leave it to you? Um, you. Um, yes, you can leave me. Yeah, you can leave me with that. I will, I will work on it. I will work on it. Yeah, the, thank the, the, you. Thank you. From Afrodic, uh, well, yeah, we'll work with Moyandwa to uh, make sure that whatever is needed, uh, will, whatever is necessary, will be shared on our website and on the NRO website. So that's not an issue. Excellent. Thank Excellent. you very much. Thank you very much. Very much. Very much. Right. So um, then let's go to uh, uh, Black. Andres? Uh, Andres, could you comment on, on when LACNIC plans to publish? Are you in, is that in? Progress. Andres, are you able to hear us? Um, maybe we'll go back to Andres later to see if we can react and uh, respond. Um, so um, let's co come back to this later again and uh, and confirm with um, Andres. And if he, he maybe he somehow cannot speak, or um, then maybe um, we can follow up with um, Andres online. So um, if this is good, then let's go to R3B, the global list. I guess everybody keeps track of the global discussions, and uh, so there's a couple of feedback on the SLA, and uh, but I see that um, RIRs have basically been uh, 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 responsive. I don't know if that's officially as RIRs, but at least uh, um, some RIR um, CEOs have been responding to the global list, and um, so I don't, I don't see anything notable um, or needs action from the team uh, related to this. Um, let's see if there's anybody else who feels differently. Um, if not, then uh, let's go to four uh, agenda four. So the crisp um, SLA review. Um, so I just want to confirm the need for um, so uh, as an update uh, of the current status, um, you know, do a recap. So we have agreed on um, what we are going to share with the global community, um, the the, the Christine's SLA review. So we have already shared this um, on the global list, and we have um, opened up for comments until I believe the 9th of June, um, and then. Um, I have made an announcement that we have uh, closed the comments to the SLA review. I haven't uh, confirmed any feedback from the community on the um, on the Quiz Team's SLA review. While I did see a direct comment to the SLA text itself, so that's my observation. And let's see if that um, in case I've missed any comments, um, that should be incorporated. Or anything else that the Chris team members um, feel that we should additionally incorporate on, on our SLA review? Zumi? Yep. Yep. Hi. Hi, it's Paul here. I'm just taking a look at like different, uh, like seeing the um, mails that are, are floating around the uh, uh, the list regarding uh, factors for implementation which may affect the timelines. And maybe it's worth us discussing um, the whole idea of uh, fallback mechanisms uh, and what is included in the plan and, and, and what's not. Um, I think this is something worth uh, raising here, and I'm just wondering if any other uh, people here have any comments on that, or if you yourself have any comment on this. Thank you. I think that's a, a very important point that uh, we discussed. So first, let's see if people have any comments related to um, this um, 
whether we need we want to uh, make any comments related to the need to clarify uh, about the fallback mechanism in the mm -hmm. SLA. Mm -hmm. I, I hear some sound. I, I don't know if somebody wanted to speak or it was just a noise. Okay. Um, so, personally, I think that um, this is a very good point. And uh, so, we have been focusing on the inconsistency with the um, proposal, which, which is why it's, uh, it was not incorporated in the first version that we have shared with the global uh, list. But I think this is something. Um, we want to emphasize the need and uh, the importance um, to the NREC. While this is, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's con it's not consistent. And the reason for um, this is that if we're not clear enough in this and be able to give assurance to the NTIA that we have a sufficient fallback mechanism in case of changing um, the INA function operator, whatever the reason uh, would be then um, NTIA probably does not feel sufficiently comfortable that um, they're able to transition. So this would actually affect um, um, whether or not our proposal is likely to be uh, acceptable to the NTIA. So I think this is quite an important point that um, we, we actually make it clear. So that's my personal observation. And um, does anybody have any other thoughts? especially any disagreement. So, Izumi, if I understand correctly, we're suggesting, or we're putting it on the table here to discuss in Chris, that this be incorporated in the SLA, that it just be included in, into the SLA. Is that the question you're asking? Um, yes. Uh, so, we actually suggest as the Chris team uh, to the NREC to, for this to be incorporated incorporated in the SLA? I think, I think that's a very good idea. I would like to know what, what others think. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit um, preliminary to, um, to make a, a concrete comment at this stage. Um, so, but Let's see if people have any concerns about um, uh, considering this. Does anybody feel that we shouldn't? Izumi, I don't um, uh, have any objection to us uh, considering it. I just wanted to make sure I was clear. So we are discussing whether the fallback mechanism in the event that there is some sort of, um, I guess, failure to perform the service be actually incorporated into the SLA and then whatever or however the operator would be part of that um, that fallback mechanism is that is that what the uh, the discussion is focusing around uh, yes and give a little bit more I suppose on uh, on details of what what would be expected does that make sense yes thank you Okay, um, then maybe we can um, follow up uh, the discussions online because I do see that um, the participants uh, from the CRIS team is limited at this call. So um, I wonder, um, Paul, would you be able to make this suggestion on the mailing list um, and then we can continue discussions um, online? And uh, we, we do want to be a little bit quick on this because we'll have to submit our comments to the um, NROEC uh, by 14th of uh, June, and which is Sunday. So we probably want to get this done, uh, completed by tomorrow. Yeah. So that's probably something we need to flesh out a little bit and put onto the list. Um, I think it would also be worth noting um, that this discussion is going to take place. So. Come on, it would be really great if we could note that down for the NROEC that this discussion is is ongoing in the in the in the in the CRISP team, and that this is something that we definitely need to have, uh, or that this is part of our discussion as the CRISP review of the of the SLAs. Is that what you're, you're is that what you're looking for, Izumi, in what you've just said? 
Uh -huh, yes, uh, thank okay. you for uh, confirming, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will certainly write, write to the list. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, so once this, uh, once we circulate this uh, poll, I think we're pulling one of this uh, a quick um, update to the global list as well. I didn't see this as anything controversial, um, but um, just to say that okay, we have we are planning to give a little bit of uh, changes from what we have circulated originally. Just uh, as a status update. Should should everyone agree? So is there a time frame, Izumi, that you're giving us? If we throw this out there on the list, is there a time frame that you had in mind that we need to make sure that we have everybody's opinion or, or, or you know, support or non-support? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Um, it's, since we're short in time, I'd like to give 24 hours um, after you circulate on, on the list um, to give feedback and then um, uh, fix that. So I guess... Um, how how long is it likely for you to take to circulate on the the crisp list? I, I think we can circulate this today. Okay, then we'll yeah. give it twenty four hours, um, and then uh, we'll fix that. And well, I I want to try avoiding working over the weekend, but in terms of the number of days, <laughs> you know, we still have a little bit of more days. So I think if we give twenty four hours after you circulate then I think we, we would have enough time to incorporate that um, um, our comment to the NRO, um, you see. Um, did somebody want to speak? Um, would, um, if not, then um, please mute. Thanks. Um, okay, so are we all clear about the next steps on this? So Paul will circulate the suggestion to incorporate on our comment to um, on the SLA, and then we, we give it 24 hours for the feedback within the cruise team, and uh, once we reach an agreement, then we circulate this to, uh, we, we submit this to the NREC uh, before 14th of um, June. And uh, so I think after you submit this poll, I will um, also write the latest timelines before the submission so that uh, everybody is clear about what exactly the time that people have to submit comments. And uh, we probably want to be a little bit advanced in uh, trying to submit comments to the NREC, so what, exactly what time that we submit our, our comments to the EC. Okay, um, so is if there are no other suggestions on this, um, let's go to another um, step and um, go to 4B to confirm the next step. Um, so what I had in mind is uh, more in lines of after we, we're done with the consultation with the community and submitted up the crisps comment to the, um, to the EC, um, it would be helpful to have what would be the process, overall process, in terms of the SLA uh, until RIR signed the contract with the um, with the ICANN? Um, and um, so, actually, on running myself has have um, posted on the global list what our expected what what our expectations are. That um, if there are any changes in the SLA, well, we would expect the next version of the SLA to be um, to be shared with the community, and then if there are any substantial changes in the SLA that would affect the numbers proposal, uh, I think it would be really um, good in terms of the process and accountability that uh, this will be shared again um, to the community. Um, so that's the kind of idea that. Um, I, I had in mind and um, uh, would like to um, expect the RIR to take these uh, steps. Um, so does any, everybody think that this will be a, a reasonable step? Um, of course, it's not our choice because this is um, the RIR choice uh, to make a decision, but at least um, I want to be clear on what we feel as reasonable as the team. Um, 
So let's see if there are any objections or other suggestions to the steps that I have described. So first, the revised version of the SLA incorporating the community feedback will be published. So that's, that's one step. And then in the future steps, um, if there are any substantial changes that is likely to affect the numbers proposal, then this is to be, um, to be shared with the community. And of course, RIRs don't have to consult every single details or every small text changes that is not necessary, um, in my view. Um, but so if there are any substantial changes that um, affect what was agreed by the community, then um, it would be good that um, RIRs share this. So if there are no um, other thoughts or opinions, then um, I would, I would uh, maybe summarize this and then consider this as something that we feel would be a comfortable step. Um, while it's not our choice to uh, make decisions about um, the next steps. Uh, so if no other comments, let's go to Agenda 5. Uh, submission of timelines to the ICG. So as you've all seen, there was a request from the ICG to uh, submit the timelines of um, implementation of the proposal. So how long would it take for us to prepare um, this implementation, um, uh, uh, prepare this implementation? And then how long does it take for us to, to actually implement um, the proposal? So these are the two sets of timelines that is requested from the ICG. And I'd like to first clarify the roles of the CRISP team and the RIR. So we have already listed within the CRISP team's mailing list um, the possible factors that needs to be considered in implementation which affects the timelines. Um, and then I think beyond this point, it's we really not the expert or involved in the imp implementation. So it's really... Um, more of the responsibility of the RIRs to confirm if these steps are um, co all covered and then also come up with the suggestion of the implementation timeline. So that is something that I would expect from the RIRs. And uh, just to share, um, I had a discussion with um, myself and Ronnie had discussions with Alan Barrett and Paul Wilson as ICG members uh, on this to confirm what is the expectation of the ICG. And they are also the NROEC as well. And they have agreed that RIRs will take a lead on this and be responsible, come up with the timelines. And then the idea is um, either Alan or Paul will send this out to um, the ICG once the RIRs come up with the implementation timeline. So that's the idea. Um, does anybody have questions or comments about this suggested step? I see no comments on this, so I would assume that this is agreed. And I think the message that we really want to, um, you know, put across clearly is that um, it's it's not as complicated as. Um, um, as maybe some people may have this perceived impression, but the, the core of it is that we we have to prepare the SLA, SLA and set up, um, set up the review committee, um, and we're likely to be able to prepare this um, by September. Uh, uh, Izumi, this is Ernest. I have a quick question. Uh, uh, where uh, where uh, did Alan and Paul? Uh, I suggest that this will be uh, the RIRs will be collectively uh, communi communicating the timeline as the NRO or each individual RIR will communicate its uh, timeline uh, separately. Um, the idea is the um, idea is um, it's going to be joint. So each RIR will probably maybe share their views about the timelines, but when the submission is made to the ICG. It's going to be a joint single timeline, uh, coordinated and uh, um, by the five RIRs. 
Does that answer your question? Um, so, um, Ernest, uh, please let me know if my re response have, have not answered your question. Um, and feel free to raise hands, or as you, you've done, you know, just uh, feel free to intervene. Um, um, and um, so, if not, I assume that um, my response was uh, clear. Um, uh, any other questions? Jimmy, I have a, I have a question. Um, I'm just wondering. I know that we're there. We're currently the um, RIRs are currently working on a report that is being prepared by our, our, our legal team on the whole IPR issues and the mechanisms to address those. I don't quite see those uh, in the outline of the timeline. Um, can you tell me where we plan on putting those or where those will will be located? I think this is something that we really um, want to incorporate as a part of the implementation timelines, and um, so it would be helpful that if you could, when RIR consider this response to the ICG, uh, put this um, IPR issue and uh, and uh, put the expected timelines on what, when we plan to be able to agree on this and the plan and things like this. And if there's anything that RIR feel that um, the Chris team should do coordination or needs um, clarity on the direction from the Chris team to be able to come up with the Im implementation uh, timelines, then uh, please let me know. Okay. So, do you, that, because the question I'm asking, I'm not really quite sure where this is being addressed. Is this something that is being addressed in what, what Alan and, and the work from Alan and Paul? No, Alan and Paul is just suggesting that RIR take the responsibilities, and I don't think they're doing any anything specific. So this is not addressed by Alan and Alan nor Paul. Okay, so who ha who has ownership of this? Uh, where where are we to hear about what comes out of this? I don't think I'm not aware of who who has who in particular within the RIRs have the ownership on this. Um, so I just know that at this point, uh, um, Paul and Alan have agreed that uh, Paul Wilson and Alan have agreed that RIRs will, will be responsible and uh, list, um, list imp, imp, um, review the implementation factors and list the timeline. Um, okay. But, excuse me, I don't know what was that. Um, so, but I don't know. Um, I don't know who exactly within the RIR are going to take responsibility, and my guess is that it, it was just raised today, so I don't think um, it's been identified yet. So um, if you think that we, the Chris team should um, take any actions to, to, for this clarity, um, making this clear, um, I'm happy to communicate to the RIRs. But my understanding is that uh, this is for the RIRs to sort this out and clarify. So I think if you can raise the kind of questions um, that you have asked me within the RIRs, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, I, I didn't think that you would have the answer because I know that I, this has to lie within the RIRs, but I just wanted to make sure that it's on the table and that it's noted because this does need to be, this is, issue definitely needs to be addressed. Oh, totally agree, yes, indeed. Um, so uh, thank you very much for um, raising this. And so we did list the implementation factors, but as I said, I, I don't think this is complete. And um, you know, we, we have only listed the things that we see from our perspective. And I think maybe IPR is actually has been listed, but there may be other things that need to be you know, uh, put, uh, put as the implementation timelines. So I think not just working on the suggested timeline for each of the factors. But if, you know, I think it would be helpful if RIRs can review if there's anything missing that we need to um, you know, put in the implementation timelines to be communicated to the ICG and ultimately to the NTIA. That would be really helpful. And uh, thank you, Paul, for raising this. Uh, so IPR is definitely something that um, we want to be clear um, about and add in the timeline.
So um, I guess the ask, um, uh, my ask for the RIR staff who are the Chris team members is that um, I trust that the, the process will start because this has been um, suggested by Alan um, to the NREC. But if you observe that the progress is slow, or if you don't see anything taking anybody taking the responsibilities and leading this, um, please help us, um, you know, um, follow up the status and make sure that RIRs actually, um, um, you know, work on this because we have to submit this by the 12th of June. Um, that was what was communicated from. Um, from the ICG after the last call yesterday. So I think it's very, we, we have quite a tight timeline on uh, 12 this next week. Um, and so we really have to, we would like to request RARs to work uh, very quickly. I do believe uh, Paul and Alan is, um, is conscious of this timeline, but I, it would be helpful to have um, the Chris team members who are the RIR staff in addition to make sure that there's nothing missing and uh, uh, good timelines will be submitted to the uh, ICG. Okay, um, so let's see if there are any other comments related to this. Um, this is really important, so um, don't feel afraid to, to raise questions or make comments. Okay, I'm not seeing any other hands and thank you very much Paul for asking this question and uh, probably help the others for more clarity. And um, so I think we've covered um, four, including the next step. So now um, the ball is to the RIRs, and then um, Paul Wilson or Alan will submit this to the ICG once um, the timeline is fixed. And uh, I think they have um, expressed that they will share with um, myself and Nurani, and will communicate to the group team if needed. So that's the next steps related to um, to uh, sorry five ICG um, submission to the ICG of the timeline. Okay, then uh, let's go to six. So this is um, the CWG stewardship proposal, our third version. I said third version, but this is not officially announced. So it's just something that's been circulated as the updated version on the mailing list. And um, I don't know if anybody has had a chance to take a look at that. Um, and uh, does anybody have any observations on the proposal? So we have already submitted our comments um, to the CWG, but um, anything else that we feel that we want to highlight or raise because there will be an ICG meeting in Buenos Aires. Okay, so let, let me um, share my observations. Um, so from the CRISP team, we have asked for um, clarity and limitation in the role of the PTI board. Uh, we have also um, requested that the role of the review committee will be restricted to the names only. And um, we have also requested that, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we have also pointed out about the, the need to coordinate on the uh, intellectual property rights issues. Um, and then um, on the latest version of the, um, the proposal, what I see is that um, on the PTI board, they have actually said that the, the role of the PTI board would be minimum, and this is needed uh, just to set up the organization. And the composition of the board uh, has become clear. So they, ha they would have uh, three people appointed from ICANN um, who are based, who would be likely to be staff working on the IANA. And then there will be two representatives who are not directly related to IANA. And uh, it would go through the nomination process. So I have a question related to this. What exactly is the nomination process and things like this, um, just to understand. So that would be one point. 
and uh, related to the review committee, uh, when I attended the webinar earlier, it wasn't very clear whether the review committee is uh, restricted to the names only, but from what is written in the proposal, it does look like um, it is restricted to the names only because um, the review will be, the unusual review will be, will start based on the CSC's concerns related to the name service level and any other uh, process um, which is uh, related to ICANN process on the IANA. So I did get the impression that um, the role of the review committee would be restricted to the names. But I think it's always worth double checking with more eyes. Um, so I will share the link and uh, maybe I will quote the relevant part. So I would really like to seek for your opinion on whether you observe anything else related to this. Uh, and then it would be good if we can compile those observations and anything to highlight to the, uh, to the ICG representatives uh, from the NRO, who would be Alan and uh, Paul Wilson so that they will be able to raise um, any questions, clarifications, or possible issues um, um, at the ICG face-to-face -face meeting in Buenos Aires. Um, oh, and one point about intellectual property rights. Um, from reading it, it sounds as though they are proposing to transfer all intellectual property rights to PTI, which may cause inconsistencies with the numbers proposal because um, some of the intellectual property rights, such as uh, IANA trademark and IANA.org domain name, were suggesting that uh, we transfer this to the community and uh, as one of the options we have suggested the IETF trust. Um, so this may be um, inconsistent from a proposal. I have to take a look in details to see if this is true. And uh, since I'm not a legal expert, I think it would be really helpful if the legal experts within the first team um, can also help us take a look and uh, share the observations. So as the next step, I'll share the link and then quote the part that I think will be relevant and uh, call for additional observations from the group team. Okay, if I see no com um no. Are you zooming? Yeah. Sorry. Um yeah, it would I think that this would be really great because I don't know if everybody from the Chris team is as well informed as you are because you actually sit within that whole um, you know, where you see all of this kind of happening from where you're sitting. Um, maybe if some of the observations were pointed out that we have, uh, it might spring to mind, uh, or if they were listed on the list, then others might chime in with what they think needs to come in there. But I, I think that if we just ask the question so open-endedly, I'm quiet because I'm also kind of going, oh, all right, like I'm following that process, but probably not as deeply as maybe others are. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I'll do that and share the link um, on the Christine list and then also share what I think should be like um, noted and highlighted um, so that um, the Christine members would have some ideas on what to um, pay attention. Um, and thank you very much, Michael, for offering help uh, on the IPR issue. Okay, um, great. So um, let's go to seven. Um, oh, and then um, and then uh, actually, sorry, I still want to go to six. So once we identify any inconsistencies, what would be the good way of communicating this or asking the questions? And my suggestion is that um, I think from now onwards, um, it would be the best if we communicate. Um, this to we also share our observation with the NROEC as well, and then uh, we request the um, the ICG representatives uh, from the NRO, who would be Alan and Paul Wilson, uh, to to highlight this and share this with the ICG. Um, I think that would be the most efficient and um, effective. So that's my suggestion.
Okay, uh, thanks Paul for um, stating on the chat that that works. So if I see no other suggestions, let's go to seven. So uh, how we prepare for ICANN R53, the ICG meeting. Um, I think we've covered um, this on Agenda 6. There's anything we want to highlight related to the names. We actually share observations and then share with the ICG our representatives. So I think we're good with our 7A. And any other face-to-face -face meetings that we want to have, since I would expect a couple of Chris team members will be there um, uh, on site. So maybe we want to have a, a Chris team meet, meeting um, among those of us who are here, or maybe early in the week to to share what's going to happen for the rest of the week during the week of the ICANN and uh, things like this. So that's one suggestion. And um, another opportunity would be an ROEC Chris team meeting. Um, so. Um, this was suggested by Paul Wilson, and I think that's a good idea. So, uh, let's, so that's the second kind of meeting that we have. And then the, the third meeting um, would be, I'm just wondering whether it would be useful to talk to the other um, the chairs, the leaders of the other operational communities, such as the protocols um, and or the names. Um, so on the first, um, the CRISP meeting, if most people are likely to be um, in Buenos Aires by Monday, I would like to suggest sometime on Monday that we get together so that uh, we know what to expect um, for the remainder of the week um, at early point of the meeting. Um, so Haman, it would be great if you can coordinate the exact time among the CRISP team members who will be in Buenos Aires. And um, and then the same goes for the meeting with the NROEC and the group team. And I think uh, uh, a suggestion at the moment I heard is to have a meeting on Sunday, um, the, the EC group team meeting. Um, uh, me? Yep. Uh, for that meeting with the EC, the proposal is to be on Sunday. So I think we'll allow to have more. Uh, members from the EC and the CRISP team on place in Buenos Aires. And I have a, already a room for that that would be, a, would be available from 2.30 uh, uh, to 6.30 on the afternoon at uh, local time in Buenos Aires. So that's Thanks, a man. specific proposal for that uh, session with the EC. I can okay. uh, circulate that information in the CRISP team list. And okay. um, let me ask with the group as well to, uh, about a uh, another time for the for the meeting there. All right. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Carmen. So I think uh, Paul has suggested to have a list of meetings between that that's relevant to the Chris team. So standalone Chris team meeting and a meeting with the NREC and any other things. So I think, yes, I will circulate this and uh, her man to coordinate the time um, and the date among the trustee members who will be in Buenos Aires. Um, yeah, I'll do that. So I think we're covered um, on the agenda that I wanted to cover today. Um, Anything else that people want to confirm, raise um, at the call today? Izumi, I know that Andres is on the call now. Maybe if he could give a little uh, update on LACNIC. I don't recall. I think we got to him for that, unless I may have missed it. Oh, great. Yes. Andres? Um... Yeah. Well, thank you, Michael and, and Izumi, for, for the opportunity. Well, uh, I, I don't know uh, if I have to report for the discussion in in the list or just uh, the lagging meeting that had a couple of sessions in the transition. And I don't know if I have reported this yet to this group, but. Okay, I think that Andres, if you could uh, first give us a rough timeline on when this report can be uh, posted on the NRO um, website. 
And then maybe something relevant to the discussions of the SLA. I think that would be useful if you could share those. Well, that, that's that's the the issue that uh, when the session, when the, the, the three members of the CRIST were in a session presenting the SLA results, or at least the draft that was at the moment uh, open for comments, the community of LACNIC were, uh, was supporting uh, on the effort that had been made, and uh, but there were not uh, much specific discussions on, on the content of the SLA. So maybe we should provide a report that says that. Uh, I don't know if it is uh, acceptable, but I believe that the, the discussion on, on the SLA, on the specifics of the SLA, uh, is not uh, very important for the Latin region. Maybe uh, those details are uh, away from their interest or or their uh, ability or for for understanding because it's very specific matter. But um, on that on that. Uh, topic on the SLA and, and the draft for comments. Uh, I don't know, I, we, we need to, to check, but I, I believe that as at least the, the compilation of comments that has been published also, there, has, there hasn't there has been comments from my region, from the Latin region either. So that's that's the general idea. And well, yeah, I, I, maybe we need to provide a report saying that or something very, I, I believe this week we can do this. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think it's useful enough to to explain that um, there is no much feedback from the LACNIC region, and uh, so at least that's a sign that there's no objections uh, to the current SLA draft. So I think it, it really would be useful to have this uh, report. And uh, earlier we were um, thinking that if it can be made available before the NREC closes the comments, um, which is 14th actually, so this weekend it might be useful as a reference. But maybe we can give a little bit of time. Um, uh, Paul, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I, I, I agree, Andres. It would be useful just to publish something. I mean, the fact that there weren't so many people uh, going against it, uh, it doesn't mean that, that somebody wouldn't have followed or, or maybe hasn't looked at it and seen, well, the principles are all identified there, nothing strikes me as an issue, and we believe it's something that the RIRs will handle. Because in most cases, I think people generally know um, that this is kind of a, you know, the actual contract between, you know, uh, the RIRs and whatever party is going to be the IN operator is something that's done by the executive boards and by the executive bodies of, 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 of an RIR or of an organization. So. Um, I, I wasn't really expecting that we would get tons of, of, of feedback on the SLA or people wanting to drive that SLA process because they would probably see that as the purview of the boards and, and the directors, as I just said. But I have to say, Andres, we, we didn't have so much comment either from the RIPE NCC region, but I just think that whatever we did have, like the fact that there was just discussion and that we know that in the room we, we specifically asked people, like, you know, do you think that you know, when we when we uh, presented the SLAs to them, we did ask them, do you think that the principles that you've agreed to, which we all agreed by the end of, of December or by early December 2014, um, do you believe they've been upheld? And most people are saying, yes, this all looks really fine. Go ahead and go for it. That's already enough to publish, that the discussion was there and that the questions were asked. But if there weren't so many questions, then that's fine. People still have the possibility up until the 14th or still have, yeah, even from obviously from the lactic region, from your meeting up until the 14th of June, if somebody would have raised an eyebrow and went in there and read it and said, oh, I see something funny, they certainly would have raised it on the list. So I think it is worth noting down and making sure that all RIRs have some kind of reporting out there. Indeed, Paul. Uh, so this week, the, that report will be available for the... Ah, oh, super dupes. Super. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent. So thank you very much, uh, Andres, and thank you also to Paul um, for ex uh, explaining this. I'm very much in, um, you know, agree with what you said. And I think it's actually a good sign that people feel comfortable enough to leave this to the RIRs. And uh, yeah, it's natural that because this is actually an area that's uh, to be worked by the RIRs. So um, yeah, I think this will be good. So thank you very much, Andres, and uh, thank you also, Michael, for reminding uh, me to to um, confirm this with Andres. Um, anything else that people want to lastly raise, question, confirm? 
If not, then um, I'll close the call and then as the action item on my side, I'll list the meetings to happen on, on during Buenos Aires and uh, would um, request command to coordinate the date um, and uh, Paul would be circulating the suggestion on the uh, fallback mechanism um, on the Christine's comment on the SLA. I think those are the two um, big action items that need to be um, followed on. Okay, so um, thank you very much, all, and um, and that was very um, nice ending music. <laughs> so um, to talk to you again, and um, and uh, keep an eye online. Okay, thank you, Zumi. Thank you very much, and uh, bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was cute. Bye.